I'll start off with the same question for both of you. Uh, Stephen, how did you get involved in trading and what attracted you to it? So I, I think uh, a lot of it had to do with uh, the movies, to be quite open. You know, growing up, I watched uh, the movies like Wall Street uh, and more recently, you know, Margin Call. Um, and so I think the, the there's a certain uh, purity to trading. It's like uh, it's mer meritocracy. It's just it's 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 about efficiency, risk taking, uh, consistency. So I just you know for me, and it's a concept that is kind of I mean my my undergrads in history. I think trading is what has propelled. It's not greed that works. It's trading that has propelled humanity from like you know farmers to marketplaces and and to, to today. So there's just something very uh, intellectually and practical, practically uh, compelling about trading that I've always uh, uh, been drawn to. Yeah, if we, if we look at history, it's always the speculators who mess things up though, right? Oh, right, God, right. And if you look at what's happening now in the world, you know, it's really, it's like a fascinating um, twist on reality to some degree, this whole kind of retail uh, explosion, you know, on the back of manifest value through cryptocurrencies and the idea that, um, you know, if you put a, a large enough, um, if you put a, a large enough audience together, you can move it, you can move the price of anything, you know, exactly, absolutely exactly. fascinating and yeah. exciting. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a great time to be involved in the space. Right. So, so if my answer was a bit too academic or, or uh, before that, Andrew, you, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's just it's kind of a microcosm of society and like, yeah, what's going on with the meme stocks, for example, it's 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 a a look into society or a manifestation of what's going on. It's it's incredible. Yeah. And how things are changing, like how people's perception of of um, w like where value and opportunity lies, you know, the the idea that you don't have to um, you know, have 20 years experience as a um, as a trader on the floor. Like you can come into it blind with a novel idea, and you can you know you can build an audience around something that's let's let's use the word contrarian. You know, that's yeah, it's really fascinating. And I think that that's really one of the great reasons why um, the space that we're in, this kind of idea of the synthetic derivative, the derivative that isn't ever matched by the underlying, um, you know, a leveraged opportunity to participate in the market. Um, the kinds of investment theses that we see, you know, um, all the time are very different to what you've seen in the past. You know, the ability to build algorithms and to build them quickly and to iterate and to innovate, to use, um, uh, to take 50 strategies and smash them through a, a, an AI and come out with, you know, the best seven for the best set of circumstances. It's like, it's really, it's, it's, um, it's an eye opener. You know, and that, that's, I mean, so that I guess would be one of the reasons why um, I'm so inter interested in the space, you know, like I came to it from when, you know, just when Ctrader was coming out, MetaTrader had been out for a long time, um, but the kind of the synchronous nature of building algorithms in, um, in, in MT4, the MQL language wasn't that interesting. And so Ctrader came out with this um, asynchronous solution, you know, on, you know, built on the C language. Um, and all of a sudden I find myself just like, you know, smashing through 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 data to to try and find some contrarian idea that I could uh, that I could take to them. You know, you know, I could put into the market and, and turn into an opportunity to create uncorrelated alpha. And so th that was where I came to it from. Like I've just always been in love with the kind of maths and the statistics of it. What kind of contrarian data would would you be looking for? Because like, don't you get smashed if you go against the the trend? The trend is your friend. No, I mean, but I mean, you could also argue, you, you could also argue, and again, I'm going to use simple examples here, like you could also argue that there is an opportunity to participate in mean reversion, which isn't driven by, you know, a, a market um, moving in one particular direction. You could also argue that there are simple strategies, and again, I'm, I'm really oversimplifying here. Um, uh, you could you could argue that there are simple strategies using moving average convergence divergence that would um, that would deliver returns. And in fact, when I built my first um, uh, uh, institutional algorithm, which was called Evolution, it was built on a support and resistance algorithm called uh, a support and resistance indicator called highs and lows resistance, which was basically like a really simple um, uh, uh, short and long term um, moving average uh, uh, complexity, uh, and I was able to deliver you know, over a, a reasonable period of time and grow reasonable assets 
um, an 11% compound annual return with a 4.5% volatility. And so lots of money trying to trade synthetic derivatives um, with a really, really over, overly simplistic um, uh, uh, investment thesis. And so, yeah. 